Hi guys, um, listen, I am going to try to share with you what is to be a three-year survivor of this industry and um, suffer in, uh, in uh, ourselves the transition to mobile. Now, uh, just a word of caution, if it looks to you in the first five minutes of the presentation that this is a winner's tour and uh, you are seeing a brochure of a company, bear with me because that's not the case, okay? Let's move on. So why did we go, why, why did we go uh, into social casino in Spain and Latin America? Well, for us it was easy. I mean, this was a 2.5 billion euro market or dollar market with the same figures that we all share. But we knew that uh, starting the company out of sunny Barcelona, which is not precisely known for high tech uh, compliance and with little money, we had little chance to succeed in front of the big guys in Anglo-Saxon markets. So what we decided to do is focus exclusively on Southern Europe, defined by France, Italy, Spain, and Portugal, and Latin America, which is a large market enough, you know, by our own estimates, um, 600 million uh, of current revenue projected to be 1.5 billion in the next few years. So we said, okay, let's, let's try to be kings there instead of servants in the other markets. So how did it go? We founded a company in 2011 uh, my partner and I, Carlos, who's sitting there. And uh, I had, my background was in real money gambling. Um, I left the industry for a while, went to run an airline uh, with my competitor here. And, uh, and then I came back to the industry and Carlos called me one day and says, listen, and remember, this was three years ago. Um, there's some people actually that want to play casino games for no money. And I said, all right, what are you smoking? And I want some. But then it was true. And we started the company and in, in the industry the, way, the same way most of you guys have done. We decided from the outset that we want to build a company around, seven, uh, around great people. We have right now 70 employees. You'll see a little bit more of that later. Uh, we founded the company with the merger of a studio in Valencia with the, um, a, a dot-com uh, property that we already had. We uh, went through an initial round of investment with Madrid-based investors. And we immediately decided to um, make good on our promise and start attacking all the international markets in our geographical area. Meaning, specifically, we avoided the UK, the US, Australia, and all the most lucrative markets and concentrated instead in Spain, Italy, France, and Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela. Not every country fared the same. Some of them succeeded, some of them did not. Our games were synchronous, multiplayer, share liquidity, multi-platform, global, local, you know. We checked all the boxes. And we discovered something that was very peculiar that we didn't know from the start, which, which is we we're going to build big audiences on traditional games, such as Buraco in Brazil. I don't know if how many of you guys are familiar with that, or Truco. And then we were going to cross-sell it to, uh, to the most traditional social casino games, such as Bingo or Slots. And it worked. Um, you know, we added all the social features. Um, and we had lots of, lots of Facebook games. Right now, we are um, handling 16, uh, 16 apps on Facebook. And then, obviously, we started our transition to mobile. So we basically went from a dot-com company in social casino to a Facebook canvas company, and then eventually to a mobile company. So what did happen? I mean, this was the strategy at the outset, you know? Do a wide product strategy. So basically, I, I define wide versus deep as companies that have basically one game and excel at that game. We saw a presentation this morning by Playtica. I think that's the best example, you know, the best slot company in the industry or you have a people that, like us that have multi-games and multi-channel. Facebook, um, Android, Apple, everything. We went immediately international, which for us meant outside of Spain and attacking Latin America. And from a business model perspective, we also had agreements, basically the old affiliate model of the internet um, and also our own, our own properties. All right, enough about philosophy. How did it go? Did it go well? Well, we're here, so we, we have survived. Basically, this is what happened. On the last 30 months, we, have, we had a consistent month-to-month -month growth of between 4% and 7%. Now, before somebody uh, asked for audit numbers, there's three, mo three months that did, that did not happen, so I'll admit to that. Um, we now are opening countries at a rate by which every international new market grows faster than the previous one. Now, we've had some of our share of accidents. I don't know if any of you have tried to do business in Argentina or Venezuela, but good luck. You know, currency devaluations, political problems, everything. We went multi-channel with our own se series of troubles, and we became profitable with a 10% EBITDA margin um, uh, rather soon that we are we're trying to keep now and increase the margin portion. 
Um, we, from an acquisition perspective, um, you know, we went from 4 million uh, visits per month to 17 million. We went also, uh, you know, 700 and almost 800,000 registrations uh, per month and FTDs per day, which is these new customers that pay every day. In December, it was 20,000, I think, right now. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, per month, sorry, we are right now at 30,000. And most importantly, we reduced churn. We went very high on paying users. Right now, we are up to 60,000 paying users at any given time. And DAUs uh, are, are right now up to a million, uh, half a million. Average revenue per DAU, one of the highest in the industry, 0 14. I know some people have highest average revenue per DAU, but if you consider the geographical area, it's pretty good. This was based also on a very captive audience on our portals. So let's take a break here. Did we win? And yeah, by the way, we went international. So, uh, oh, and also the industry um, gave us some awards. We were the uh, social casino um, app of the year, uh, rising star, Wired, named us one of the top uh, 100 startups in Europe, which you know, was very surprising to us. Um, so the question is, we won? And this is my answer to all of you guys. Not so fast. I, th <laughs> I think what happened here is that the industry is going through a radical transformation. And the title of the presentation was Be Mobile or Be Dead. And I think even a company like Akamon, which has not done so bad for the last two years, basically is back to square one. Either we transform ourselves to mobile very quickly or our history would have, is a would have been. That's the way I see it as a CEO, and that's the task I'm going to share with you. What I'm doing to try to transform my company first from a dot-com company, then to a Facebook canvas company with a multi-platform strategy to know a fully mobile, mobile-first company. And it's not easy. Now, wait. All right. Now, how deep is the mobile effect on the social casino industry? Now, in our opinion, the way we see it today at Akamon, and remember, our markets are not the most mobile uh, markets yet. We still have the privilege of getting customers on our portals, and we still have a lot of Facebook Canvas uh, audience, is that basically, sorry for that, this is a big deal. Even the Vice President of the United States says so. I mean, this is a big deal. It's changing everything. I would argue that this is changing the way you recruit, this is, uh, 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 this is changing the way you develop. This is changing the way you market. This is changing the way you finance yourself because the distance between acquisition cost and lifetime value gets deeper. So basically, it's a transformation thing. Let me start with people. Now, when you look back at your, at your company, and it's 70 people in, a, in my company today, which I like, which I enjoy working with them, would you basically say that the same people that develop your portal games are the same people that will develop your best mobile games? I think the question is up there. And who is going to tell you that you have right now your best mobile development team? You know, click to find out. What about marketing? Marketing has changed. You know, virality channels are less so. Acquisition on mobile, except, you know, the little secret that we all know about the Facebook mobile application. You know, everything else, you know, apps, uh, uh, app discovery, uh, link exchanges, everything is a bunch of unknowns. And my, I would argue, too, that you know, from the list of w previous winners and previous losers, everything is going to change again. Now, let me give you a very precise stat. Social Casino Intelligence has been publishing the list of top 25 social casino companies for two years in a row. Akamon has been very fortunate. We were number 14 one year, number 15 the other year. But we also noticed that eight companies changed from one year to the other. My perception is that this year it will be more. People will change, except the top three at the top, the rest will change, and the driving change effect is mobile. And I think that some of us will, uh, will visualize the penalties of failure, while others will visualize the, win the, the, the rewards of having changed to mobile uh, adequately. And perhaps in a less happy note, this is going to leave some dead bodies behind. Now, my job in front of my shareholders, and I'm one of them, is to make sure that Akamon is not one of them. So let me share with you what we do. First of them is very specific commitments. And let me share with you the rules of the C370s at Akamon. We have 70 people in the company today. We think that this is the right size to uh, address our challenges for 2014. And of those, 70% are on the product side, meaning developers, game designers, and everything. The rest is business developers, marketing online, CEO, and everything. And of the product side, 
70% is concentrated on mobile products, on mobile, on mobile projects. Now, at least this is a very clear commitment. So you cannot say you're transforming your company to mobile and then suddenly have 70% of your workforce working on Facebook Canvas or desktop applications. The, th the next thing that we're doing is that every new project now is thought from a mobile first or at least mobile very quick perspective. And this has led to traumas in changes of priorities, game plans, and everything. But now, and also sharing with um, my colleague from Playtica from this morning, the vision of uh, Windows Mobile as a very valid platform, we concentrate our knowledge on the mobile first platforms and try to understand them. Also, new games are thought from a mobile perspective. How is, going, how is gameplay going to be affected by mobile? How is our, our session times needed to be quicker, shorter, uh, more adapted to mobile? Um, this is everything that we're doing be from becoming, remember, a portal company to then a canvas company to now a mobile company. Now, and you know, it seems that we're on the right way. Right now, almost 45% of our new FTDs are coming from these platforms. So will it work? Will I be here one year from now and telling you that the mobile transformation on Akamon um, has worked? To tell you the truth, I have no idea. I have no idea, but at least we're trying. And we know that this is what we want, and we have the commitment from the top, from the board, to the shareholders, to the key management, that this is the way we want our company to look from one year from now. Because we understand that otherwise, we cannot look at the future in a bright way. Thank you so much. And uh, please, I'll be open to your questions. Thank you. I'm sure there's some questions uh, regarding the emerging market in the room here. Who's got questions? Oh, you had to be you. Uh, <laughs> name, company, and question, please. Uh, Elad Kushner from Playtica. Um, can you talk a little bit about the market size for social casino? in Latin America, because uh, yeah. we consistently debate that internally if it's really that large. Our estimates is, is current. Um, so basically our estimates is for Southern Europe and Latin America, 600. I don't know if you would agree with that number roughly. Of that, we would take a third out to, for Southern Europe. Uh, and that includes France, which is a very healthy market. It's becoming our third market. Of Latin America, it's, there's a very simple story that we always share, and I think I've shared it with you in the past. I think Brazil, and everything else combined is basically the same. So we would say that Brazil right now is a $200, $200 million market, and everything else combined, including Mexico, is $200 million. So you're saying $200 million is the market potential, or it's $213? It's uh, 214. 214. 214, yes. Okay. yes. Other questions? Hi, Daniel from Product Menace. Um, so obviously you've got a Facebook business which is your current cash cow and you're shifting 70% of your resources to, to something new that you're trying to develop and obviously Facebook business is an ongoing business, it's sort of you know, gains as a service type of thing, you need to create content changes. Yep. How, do you, how do you manage that tension? Do you, take, do you feel like you're taking a big risk on your current revenue stream? Well, it's a very good question. Uh, look, our Facebook business is a peculiar business because we have very large audiences as in traditional games such as Buraco and games that basically nobody else bothered to do. We try to monetize them and then on social casino, which works rather well. And then at the same time, we transition to mobile where we don't have the luxury of cross-selling users at the same rate, as you know. So basically, it's a type of bet your company type of, uh, type of uh, move. We understand that. Uh, we're working very, very hard to that. In fact, uh, um, we are also trying to preserve our previous cash cow, which was our dot-com business. Uh, and specifically within our dot-com business, our um, our affiliate business, or basically partnership business. So in, in the next three months, I think this, there's a couple of things that are very exciting for us. Well, one of them will be announcing a new chief product officer that will be joining the, the, the company. I think he will help us lead this transition. And second, on the partnership side, uh, we, have, we are very blessed to have been chosen by one of the uh, big companies to uh, do a partnership in one of our key markets, which is Brazil. So I think we will try to preserve our cash cows while we don't get distracted of, uh, of changing the company to mobile. It's a, it's a hard challenge, I know. <laughs> Questions? Well, I'd like to, to focus on the portal piece uh, real quickly because a lot of uh, operators in the social casino space have been on Canvas or they've been on, on Google or Apple or Amazon's platforms. Uh, you guys have had a lot of early success as a portal. What, what, what are the experiences that you had and, and, and how is that different from operating on someone else's platform? 
look, you, you, we stumbled into Portal because when we joined, we founded the company in 2011, which you know looks like a million of years ago. Basically, one of the assets that formed the company was a previous Portal on the more casual scene that we transformed very quickly into social casino. What you can see about Portal is basically a few things. One of them, average revenue per DUs are very high if you can manage to keep your customers because. I wouldn't use the, the, the sentence captive audience, but almost. I mean, they're there, they're vested, they have their, uh, they have their badges, they have their awards, they have their avatars, so they stay there. Second, um, it's the marketing portion, it's a little bit more like internet of the 90s, you know, like Google search and one by one and affiliates and looking at traffic and things like that. And third of all, uh, basically you do then see a lot of synergies when you start operating on Canvas and you see your people moving from Canvas to portal and then to mobile. So it makes sense for us to keep it. Uh, Vladimir, also from Product Madness. Hey. Uh, I want to ask, uh, do you have a synchronized development cycle across different platforms? So do you try to release content at the same time and keep everything in sync? I wish I could tell you yes, but that's not happening yet. Uh, and I think that's one of the big challenges on the technical side. Uh, I think we will be there very soon, but it's not a synchronous cycle in full yet. I think. We're still at the phase which, uh, you know, I think every recipe is valid if it works for you, of testing very quickly on Canvas, uh, iterating, and then, uh, and then putting all the final touches on the, on the mobile version. That's still where our status is. Other questions? Hi, uh, Dave Young from Blue Shell. Um, I just want to say I agree with everything you just said. Well, which... thanks. Totally I'll tell customer. Brian, you know, he's a good friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you mentioned that you have no question that in a year from now, the big, you said the big three will still be around. Do you see any opportunities on mobile to go after and take down the big three? Huh. I don't know. I mean, I think, I think um, doing the same thing they do, basically slots, uh, bingo, and to a certain extent poker, although I think slots and bingo are the, the two big categories, no. I think, I think their economies of scale work. I think their economies of scale allow them to capture the best traffic and the prime, the prime traffic, especially in Anglo-Saxon markets, which is where you operate. I think on new categories, uh, and I think some of the categories are interesting, um, uh, yes, why not? Um, and I think innovation, you know, the fact that nine companies change from the first top 25 companies to the, to the second one, it's an indicator that innovation is still up there. Additional questions? What about content in the emerging markets? and? You look at slot sort of percentage of market, poker, bingo, et cetera. What, 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 how is that different in the Latin American markets? From a traffic point of view, they love their own games. Uh, you know, the, class, the traditional card games are, are, from a traffic point of view, are mind boggling what you can get there. From a monetization point of view, guess what? It's basically the same thing than in the rest of the markets. Now, but let me give you an additional part of the answer. I think the industry, and we're very fortunate that this is like that, is missing a huge opportunity. Because if you see it from a marketing perspective, when Thanksgiving comes, all the co uh, social casino gaming companies run exactly the same Thanksgiving pro uh, promotion. Now, if you speak about Thanksgiving to a Brazilian, they don't even know what it is. And, it, and they have their canvas full of Thanksgiving promotions. So basically, only adapting marketing is a huge opportunity. And, and not to, you know, to, not to, not, uh, and then you need to, you need to adapt customer service and content and everything else, but just marketing. And, and uh, we're fortunate that it's bas we're basically the only ones doing it. Yeah. What, what about user acquisition costs and, and LTV? How do, how do they vary? That was one of our biggest surprises. When we started the company, we basically, you know, our baseline case was Spain. So we basically took everything as a base 100 compared to Spain. And we thought, all right, well, France, you know, they're a little wealthier than us. They're in the north, so it'll be 1.2. Italy, they're like us, it will be one. And then, you know, Brazil, Latin America, we conquered them 500 years ago, so they'll be half. Well, that's, <laughs> and we were completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> we were completely wrong. Brazil was basically the same uh, as Spain, to our own surprise. Now, gross and net is a big difference in Brazil because of payment system commissions on the portal side. So Brazil is a market that has been a huge, pleasant surprise for us. And then Argentina and Venezuela, we were, you know, uh, basically right, and then you have the hidden gems, and the hidden gems would be Peru, uh, Chile, very stable countries that are not that big and are very stable. Spe speaking of payment problems in the emerging markets, you know, what sort of opportunities does Bitcoin present? Well, I, <laughs> uh, Brock, I don't know why you, <laughs> you asked me that. Um, look, if I would be Argentinian, I would be put all my savings in Bitcoins. Uh, so that's, that's basically the answer. I think Argentina is, uh, is an amazing market for Bitcoins. 
I would say uh, Venezuela almost the same and some other uh, markets which you know they, they are they are very sizable economies and I think uh, from a, a, a wealthy part of the population perspective there's no argument about it now major adoption that's your job well, yeah if everyone starts doing what you're talking about doing I think yeah it could be a very interesting payment platform any other questions I think uh, we'll wrap this up then uh, you speak so quickly we can get through a lot in a very short period of time <laughs> thank you Vicente thank you